Hey guys, so real quick, I'm gonna show you everything I read in December and everything I plan to read in January. The first book that I finished in December was Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. This is the third book in the Gentleman Bastard series. I read this with Lindsay, Sarah, Sana, Michael, PT, and Sam. I'm pretty sure that's everybody. There's been more people added to our group since then, so I'm pretty sure that's everybody that read this book with us. But yeah, this book was freaking amazing. The series is amazing. It made my top favorite series of 2014. It's one of my top favorite series of all time. I love Scott Lynch's writing. I love the humor in this book. I love the characters. Locke and Jean, the main characters, are two of my favorite characters of all time. I think Locke is probably might possibly be my favorite character of all time. Like above any of the characters in Brandon Sanderson books, above any of the characters in Stephen King books. Locke, I just, I love Locke. And Jean is just as awesome too. Basically they're thieves that do these really great elaborate heists as a part of this group called the Gentleman Bastards. The first two books really focus on them doing that kind of stuff. This book focuses on a lot of really different things. We meet a character that has only been talked about in the other two books and has only showed up until this book, a character named Sabatha. She is kind of a love interest to Locke and we see a lot of their relationship. Like the first book focuses mainly on Locke. I think the second book really focuses on Jean a lot and Jean and Locke's friendship. And now the third book is really focusing on Locke and Sabatha. It's not my favorite of the series. I'd probably put it as my third favorite. Red Seas and Red Skies, the second one was my favorite. Lies of Locke Mora, the first one would be my second favorite and this one would probably be my third favorite, but they're all really awesome. And I had a whole lot of fun reading it with everybody. And I'm freaking serious. If you haven't picked this up already, the series, then you need to because it's amazing. And I can pretty much guarantee that a very wide variety of people would like this. The next book that I finished was The Cuckoo's Calling, an audiobook by Robert Galbraith. This was really good. I gave it a four to five stars. I felt like it dragged on a bit and lasted a little bit longer than I would have liked. I kind of figured out what was going on really early on, but I still really liked it. I liked the characters. I liked the main character, Corman Strike, and his kind of sort of sidekick, Robin a lot and I especially liked the narrator for the audiobook. He is awesome and I definitely suggest reading that book on audiobook if you haven't read it yet. Basically it's like a murder mystery. Corman Strike is a detective. This girl has committed suicide and her brother kind of goes to Corman Strike and asks him to do kind of figure out whether or not it actually was suicide. All the different things that J.K. Rowling puts in this, all the different links and different connections, all the different characters is really good. She is just a way with having a big cast of characters and going back and forth between characters and creating this mystery. It was a lot of fun to read and I really, really liked it. I liked it a lot more than A Casual Vacancy, which I've never been able to finish. Then I finished All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This was such a beautiful book. I just did a full review on this book. I mean, it was kind of a short full review and I didn't really go that in depth in it. I just kind of wanted to give a quick few thoughts on what I liked about it and it was just beautiful. Like I said, it was really good. It made my top five favorite standalones. If you haven't picked this up yet and you love historical fiction, if you like World War II stories, then I definitely suggest picking this up. Surrounds this blind girl in France and this boy in Germany who's kind of forced to be in the Hitler Youth and how their stories are sort of entwined. They seem very separate at first and they kind of come together and it's just a really, really beautifully written story. The next thing I finished was The Bone Season, also an audiobook. I had a lot of problems with this. Well, okay, it was, it wasn't bad. I do think I'm going to try and read The Mime Order, the second book in the series at some point. I just don't know when and I don't know, I'm, I'm really on the fence about it. I, I think I had a lot of problems. Some of the stuff in the book, like there's this sort of paranormal, uh, psychological weird magic system kind of thing going on that is very convoluted and I just felt wasn't done very well. I don't think the plot was done very well. I don't think the characters were done very well. The book starts out in this sort of alternate history, London kind of city that Basically, there are these things called clairvoyance, and the main character, Paige, is a clairvoyant. These, the clairvoyants have this sort of powers that are outlawed, they're not allowed to use their powers, and there's this big kind of criminal underground surrounding clairvoyance, and the main character, Paige, she is a clairvoyant called a dreamwalker. She is a very rare kind of clairvoyant, and she works for one of the underground crime syndicates. And that part, to me, was really interesting. I like that part, and I kind of wish it continued in that part, but we kind of get pulled away from that, like, almost immediately as it started, and get, get pulled into something that's, to me, is just really random. There's this, like, this sort of being called a refame that is kind of in control of everything in this world, and it just, to me, it just wasn't very well done, 
it wasn't it doesn't seem like it's very well thought out I just thought the plot was kind of clunky the characters didn't really connect with me that well they got better as they went along in the book but really only Paige the main character ever felt fully fleshed out to me I was hoping I would like this one more but I didn't and I gave it three out of five stars. After that, I listened to the audiobook for Yes Please by Amy Poehler. I really like Amy Poehler. I don't really watch Saturday Night Live. I haven't really ever watched it that much. I did watch it a little bit when she was on it, when her and Tina Fey and like that cast was on it uh, a while ago. And I love Parks and Rec and I can't wait for the new season to come out. It comes out this month and it's gonna be awesome. This was good. I, I'm not really necessarily a memoir person. I, I'm not exactly sure what I was expecting with this. I just kind of wanted to give it a shot, and it, it wasn't it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be, but I still did like it. I gave it four or five stars. I thought it was pretty funny. Like I said, memoirs aren't necessarily my thing, but this was good, and I did enjoy it, and I definitely suggest listening to the audiobook because Amy Poehler narrates it herself, plus she has a few special guests that help her narrate it, and it's really nice to like hear her deliver her own words the way she does in the audiobook. So if you really like memoirs or if you like Amy Poehler, definitely read that. The next thing I finished reading was Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. This is one of the last things in the Cosmere that I have had not read yet, the last full novel that I hadn't read yet, and the last standalone that I hadn't read yet. Um, I read Warbreaker a couple months ago. I really, really loved Warbreaker. This one was not as good as that one, but it was still good. I still gave it a five just because I love Brandon Sanderson's writing. I love the politics in this. I love the characters. The characters I did a full review on this, well, a mashup review of this and a few other Brandon Sanderson things, including Warbreaker, just a few days ago. So you can, I'll put a link to that in the description. You can go watch it. But the characters in this one weren't, they were kind of static compared to some of his other characters. I think I thought Warbreaker had some of the best characters of any Brandon Sanderson book, and this one, they're kind of, they kind of stay in the same place. They kind of don't really grow that much. But at the same time, I don't really mind that. I still really liked the characters. I really liked the story in general. Basically about this city called Elantris where the magic has disappeared. It used to be this really magical place where these people that had this like silvery skin and it could do the magic and then one day, ten years before the actual time the book takes place, there is this thing that takes away the magic and everything, everybody that lives in Elantris, all the Elantrians, are turned from their silvery glowing skin to this diseased looking like kind of leper people who when they get cut they never heal they feel that pain forever and they just never die so they just kind of live forever with the pain until they go insane with it. The prince of the city right next to Elantris uh, t falls into this and like becomes an Elantrian and is put into Elantris and has to kind of figure out what's going on with Elantris and there's some other stuff going on, a lot of political stuff. This one has a lot less focus on the magic system than uh, Brian Sanders and other work. I definitely suggest going to watch my review on this to learn more about it, but I really liked it a lot. I do not recommend starting here with Brian Sanderson's work. If you're looking for a standalone, go read Warbreaker. Then I read a whole bunch of novellas by Brandon Sanderson. The first one was The Emperor's Soul in this uh, lineup of Legion and the Emperor's Soul. I also read Legion, but The Emperor's Soul, I did a review of that as part of the mashup review with Warbreaker and Elantris. I really liked it. The Emperor's Soul won a Hugo Award, and I can definitely see why it was really good. I liked, I really liked the main character. I really liked the little magic system that's going on in it. It's basically about this girl who can do this magic called forgery, where she basically takes the history of an object and changes the history of an object by putting a soul stamp onto it. And she's basically caught trying to make a forgery of the Emperor's Scepter and then is put, put in jail and then given this opportunity to save herself, forging a new soul for the Emperor who has just been a victim to assassins who didn't kill him but left him basically brain dead. And she has to create a new soul for him, a new personality based on his history. She has to, she has to learn everything about his history, everything about his personality, and create a soul stamp for him so they can bring the Emperor back. It's really good, like I said, and I definitely recommend it. It's pretty short and a really fast read. And then I read Legion. I read Legion in this and I really liked it a lot. And I also read Legion Skin Deep as an audio book. It was a free audiobook on Audible, so I just went ahead and downloaded it, and I read this and then listened to that like back to back, and I really liked both of them. I gave them both four to five stars. I really, really wish that they were kind of expanded a bit more. We kind of went into the ideas a little bit more, but overall, I really did like them a lot. Basically about the schizophrenic guy who sees a bunch of different personalities as aspects. He's basically, he can see them and talk to them, and they can 
they teach him stuff that he doesn't already know and they help him do stuff like he'll look at a textbook like just flip through the pages have like a photographic memory of everything and then a new aspect a new personality will appear in the form of a person and that person will kind of guide him in whatever information he just uh, kind of flipped through and he uses this to help him solve like crime solve mysteries help people out and it's just it's really good i really like the main character steven and all of his personalities i think it's a really good idea and i really hope that brandon sanderson writes more within that kind of storyline and writes more legion stories because they're just a lot of fun and then i listened to the audiobook for a christmas carol by charles dickens this was narrated by tim curry and it was a whole lot of fun tim curry i love tim curry i love him as an actor frankenfurter pennywise the clown he's awesome and I was really excited to see this on Audible and get it and read it right before Christmas. I listened to it um, on Christmas Eve while I was at work and it was just really nice listen. It was a really quick, quick listen and I really liked it a lot. I'd already read it once before but it really got me in the mood to read more Charles Dickens and I got a bunch of Charles Dickens for Christmas so I'm really looking forward to getting into more of his work. Then I read the ebook for Six of Dusk, another novella by Brandon Sanderson. This is a Cosmere novella. This was another of the books that I did and that review mashup I posted a few days ago and this is probably my favorite novella, my favorite Brandon Sanderson novella that I've read so far, that he's written so far. It takes place on this entirely different world than many other, other Cosmere books or these like these magical birds that kind of grant powers to the people who own them and the main character is this thing called a trapper who kind of takes care of the birds traps the birds breeds the birds and all that and he lives on this island where the birds live and it's just got a really really interesting ideas it's got a really interesting place within the cosmere it has a lot of really implications on the cosmere and i really really hope the story gets expanded i mean the story is less than 100 pages long and it's amazing to me the detail that brian Harrison was able to put in this and the world building he was able to do in that short amount of time that is one that i really just cannot recommend highly enough i also read another brian Harrison cosmere novella called Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell. This is part of a, an anthology called Dangerous Women, which was edited by George R. R. Martin. I didn't read the rest of the anthology. I've heard very mixed things about it. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like an anthology called Dangerous Women perhaps be edited by a an editor that is a woman, but I mean, that's just, 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 just a thought. But I mean, that's the only story I read in the entire book. I might get the other ones later, but I really just wanted to read this one because it was the last thing in the Cosmere that I hadn't read yet, and I really liked it. It was kind of dark compared to the other ones and kind of emotional. There wasn't really any clear magic system going on, but there are these things called shades in this place called the Forest of Hell, where basically the Forest of Hell, there's things called the simple rules and you have to follow the simple rules. There are like these three rules. I can't remember exactly what they are. I think they're like, don't draw blood, don't set anything on fire, and don't run. And if you don't do those two things, then you'll be fine. But if you do any of those things, and these things called shades will be immediately drawn to you and come to kill you. And it's like very, it's very hard to get away from. And the main character, Silence, is kind of a bounty hunter within the, the forest of hell. This one was just really good. I really liked it. I think Brandon Sanderson just has a really good grasp on how to do a novella. And I mean, if you really want to, you don't necessarily have to get the anthology that it's in, uh, if you look hard enough, not that I'm, not that I'm condoning this, if you look hard enough, you could pretty easily find it on the internet by itself. And then I read Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. Don't really want to talk about this much, I really didn't like it, I thought it was just kind of pointless. I mean, I, I'm fine with meandering character studies that are just, they're kind of aimless and just fun and all that, and I, I might have liked it a little bit more for it being that, if it wasn't for Patrick Rothfuss's sort of pretentious attitude about it. it. What I kind of picked up is that in his forward and in his endnote to this book, I just, his approach to this, I don't agree with, and I don't really, I just didn't like this at all. I'll put the link below to the things I said about it on Goodreads, so you can get a better idea of what I thought about it. But I gave this one a two out of five stars. And then the last book that I got through in December was Wolves of the Kala by Stephen King. This is the fifth book in the Dark Tower series. I am in love with the series. I cannot say that enough. I'm going to do a full review of the series as soon as I'm done. This one kind of 
turned things in this very awesome direction that I wasn't expecting at all and that I really, really like a lot. I'm just really looking forward to seeing how the series ends. All right, so I also started listening to the audiobook for The Silkworm at the end of December. I finished it already in, in January, but I'll talk about that in my January wrap-up. I also started at the end of the month Song of Susanna by Stephen King. I actually just finished this today. Well, I'm, I mean, I finished, I'm filming this on a Sunday. I don't know when you're going to see it, but I finished it today. I loved it. I'll talk about it more in my wrap-up and, of course, talk about the series more, like I said, in the full series review. This one was freaking amazing. That's all I'm going to say. And then for the rest of the month, I'm going to... I just started reading Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, it's taken me forever to get to this, and I finally am, because Firefight comes out on Tuesday. I might have already started Firefight by the time you see this video. I'm going to be reading Firefight with a bunch of other booktubers. Lindsay, Sarah, Connor, Michael, and Caitlin, I believe. And I am really, really looking forward to finally getting into this series. One of the last things by Brandon Sanderson that I haven't read yet. And right now I'm also listening to the audiobook for Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. This is a bind up of the first two books in the Riria Revelations series. We're I'm listening to that one right now and later in the month I'm going to listen to the audiobook for Rise of Empire which is a second bind up of the third and fourth books. I'm going to be listening to that and reading along with that once again with other booktubers, Lindsay, Sarah, Michael, Sam, Connor, Caitlin, and Sana. We're all going to be reading it at the same time. I'll put a link to everybody that I talk about in this video down below, just so you know. I plan on starting the first book in the Malice and Book of the Fallen series, Gardens of the Moon. I'm also going to read this book, A Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Vinge. It's kind of a classic sci-fi book. I don't necessarily know anything about what it's about, but I'm going to be reading this, and I'm going to be listening to the audiobook, because I found the audiobook at my library on Overdrive, listening to the audiobook of the prequel to this called The Darkness in the Sky. These two books are part of the series called The Zones of Thought. I am also going to read Lord Fowl's Bane by Stephen R. Donaldson. This is the first book in the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever. I want to get through this entire series this year as well. I also plan on finishing the Dark Tower series by reading the last Dark Tower book sometime this month. I'm also probably going to listen to Authority, which is the second book in the Southern Reach trilogy, the first one being Annihilation. I also am going to be listening to the audiobook for The Magicians by Lev Grossman. I'm going to be reading along with a few of those book tours that I've said already. Other than all that, I don't know what else I might be able to get into. I'm, those are just the main things that I'm going to be focusing on this month. I just posted a video yesterday about my 2015 resolutions and everything that's on my shelf that I haven't read yet. I'll also link that down below so you can go watch it and see what I plan on doing for the rest of this year. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments on anything I just showed you, feel free to let me know. And yeah, I'll see you very soon with more.